Hi everyone, welcome back to our podcast on Migrate and Try the Insider Tips for E-commerce Replatforming. I'm Carol Nguyen, going to be the host for today's podcast. And also joining with me today, we have two guest speakers from Big Commerce, are Kyle and Jason. They are from, uh, they are all our partnership manager at Big Commerce, and they will be the one who's sharing deeply on the topic about replatform. Because as you know, right now we are facing a very sensitive business crucial era where everything are related to the business environment, the scalability and the constants of business. So replatforming is coming to be a very upcoming trendy topic for any merchants that are looking for to up- up-level their business, to narrow down the cost for replatforming and of course to optimize their business and providing the army channel journey for their clients. So of course, it's going to be a very fruitful and very insightful topic today we are having. So I would happy to kick this back to our speaker to introduce yourself a bit so you would know who we are having to speak today. So Kyle, would you mind to have a few words to our attendees to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Kyle Johnson. I'm the Senior Partnerships Manager here at Big Commerce. I work really closely with our payments and point of sale partners to develop and deliver modern checkout solutions uh, for merchants, whether their customers are choosing to make a purchase online or in store. Uh, before Big Commerce, I spent about four years working in Asia, helping uh, U.S. clients create amazing cross-border e-commerce experiences for merchants in the Chinese market. And before that, I had spent several years working for some of the leading payments and point-of-sale companies here in the U.S. So very excited to be here. Thanks, Carol. Very thank you for the introduction. We're really glad to have you here today. And it's really exciting to hear all the experience about yourself. Well, attendees of ours would have a lot to have all of the sharing from you and the experience you already have. So what about you, Jason, giving a little hints for our attendee? I guess thanks so much. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, Jason Burge, uh, Strategic Partnerships for our Point of Sale Vertical. Part of my role is to consult with our partners and clients to find integrated commerce solutions based on their needs. Um, I've only been in big commerce since September, but was a partner for five years. And uh, during that time, I was uh, 14 years working for a point of sale VAR, an e-com tech integration specialist, helping to build solutions for omni-channel retailers looking to bring point of sale and e-com together. Wonderful. That's a great background, Jason. And to be honest, it's really an honor for Connect POS to join in today with Big Commerce to have this conversation kicked off our attendees and of course our Connect POS ourselves are very faithful to have the, all of the information and experience from you guys. So of course, to beginning with, then as I mentioned before, we have a topic here is all about replatforming, which means changing the e-commerce to make the merchant success. So of course, we will be focusing on the replatform and we will dig deep down into the pain point of the merchants for what is the rising cost when having a platform promoted or how the merchant would explore the alternative solutions for their business. And as a result, how the business would beneficial from replatforming. So that will be all the key part we will explore today. So actually, Kyle, what is your thought on changing platform and replatforming trend right now? Yeah, so in the last, there's been a lot of really interesting industry pieces being put out over the last couple of years um, as we really look and come out of uh, the pandemic that affected the, the obviously the entire globe um, and really changed the way consumers are looking at how they purchase goods online. Um, everybody got very comfortable buying on Amazon and different marketplaces. Some of the leading uh, e-commerce brands uh, really were fast adopters of solutions like omni-channel and different types of solutions that allow them to really quickly adapt the way they did business in order to meet uh, the the changing demands for how consumers are expecting to purchase goods. Um, There's two really interesting, uh, actually three surveys. So in the last two years of Deloitte's annual retail industry outlook survey, um, there are really two fascinating insights that came out of those reports. Um, In 2022, they over 67% of responders cited that e-commerce and online uh, shopping platforms were the key areas of top investments, um, really due to the longstanding 
platforms that they had already been on, right? These these platforms had started to become outdated, too cumbersome in order to, to update. And so almost two thirds of merchants that were surveyed were looking to make some changes to their platform in the next year or two. Um, and then in this year's uh, survey, I thought there was a really interesting um, trend that was starting to bubble up, which was the importance of omni-channel in a brand strategy, especially highlighting um, the importance of an in-store strategy to help engage with merchants, right? Especially this nature, it helps not only to create a stickier client experience that keeps them retained in your brand, but also allows you to reduce costs from things like returns or repackaging and uh, other ancillary fees that come with uh, returns. And then I saw another uh really interesting report um, from Digital Commerce 360 in their uh, 2023 e-commerce platform report. Uh, 27% of the companies surveyed are looking to switch e-commerce platforms this year, and 76% are looking to increase the technology investment that they are making this year, which is really just underscoring the importance of modernizing your tech stack to support the growth of your brand. Thank you for sharing all the numbers, Kyle. I think that is a truly wonderful data that you have pulled out. There's a lot of numbers, figure, and insight that's showing from the market that replatforming is definitely something the merchants are thinking about. And there is a big trend is coming up on replatforming. So that is why we're having this podcast here today, actually, to show the merchant that why should they consider replatforming? And of course, we should kickstart from the beginning. What is the definitions of re-platforming and why the market is going crazy about it like that? Sure. So what you're seeing from those reports is really a, a desire and uh, a really awareness by brands that they need to update and modernize the way that they engage with their customers. And this can be really difficult on an older or outdated uh, platform, um, particularly ones that are customized. They require a lot of effort and development and time and resources in order to make those types of changes. And so one of the things that companies are starting to recognize is that moving to a more modern e-commerce platform will not only allow them to do the exact same features and functionality that we've all come to expect from e-commerce, but also provide a foundation that will allow them to grow their business, not only this year, but for many years to come. Um, so one of the main reasons uh, that a new platform will help with those types of growth opportunities is allowing you to improve your user experience, increasing your conversion, and making sure that a website is really easy to manage so you don't need technical resources in order to make changes to your platform, but actually can just have the core business teams that are making decisions day in, day out, able to make those changes on a website. Um, so additionally, there might be also another reason why merchants would be looking to move, and that's that their platform has gone beyond outdated and is actually no longer supported. Many times, especially with older platforms that are more of an open source or open code uh, type platform, there's a requirement to make sure that you keep your business's e-commerce website up to date with all the security patches, all the functionality that all of the different solutions that you might use to perform your, your e-commerce strategy up to date. And so as your partner solutions no longer support your current platform, it'll be much more difficult and much more risky to maintain your business on that platform. And so those are two of the main reasons why merchants are looking to update their platform. Mm. So re-platforming, that is how you define it. What is the root problem? What is how the merchant would understand what is re-platforming? So I think when I heard what you're sharing, it sounds like there is a lot of technical things need to be involved in from seeing the performance and then migrate and everything. There's a lot of technical involving. So of course, I think our attendees would happy to hear how the technical will be involved and what should they aware of. Um, I think when coming to technical for replatforming for e-commerce, seems like something Jason's would be perfect one to sharing. So Jason, can you help me to determine what is the technology aspect the clients or the merchants should know when coming to re-platforming? Yes. Uh, when I was working in the point of sale industry, we helped dozens of retailers, uh, you know, re-platform when the pains of either an underperforming system started to become too costly or prohibitive uh, to creating uh, increasing sales. Um, the, the state of the industry digital experience is very crucial for, you know, revenue growth. Um, if the performance isn't there, 
uh, then consumers are not comfortable purchasing on a site. So really what we saw was, especially for smaller businesses, the ability to add new technology on to a platform or a platform architecture or environment is extremely important for growth. There's a lot of tech debt and, and effort that goes into maintaining uh, a, an e-commerce environment. And without an agile modern platform, that can become almost impossible uh, without a massive uh, investment in time and effort uh, to keep up. And no one has time for that. So what we see there is that the best thing to do to, to, to future proof is to stay in the absolute most modern type of environment that you know generally is a, an incredibly well integrated SaaS environment with open APIs and webhooks and um, you know those types of technologies that make it very easy for an agency to assist. It makes it much easier for it, the technical resources inside the company um, and and even the non technical resources inside the company to be able to. Uh, contribute meaningfully to the overall vision um, without constantly running into, uh, you know, tech heaviness that requires a lot of time and effort. Mm. Sounds like there's a lot of things to be aware of when coming to be platforming, especially when coming to the technicals, how to choose the technical infrastructure and also how to managing and cut tile to make the project clean. So I think there will be a lot of challenges and I believe you guys will feel the same thing, right? So when coming to replatforming, it's a huge topic and there's a lot of challenge. And of course, our merchants, the one going to have actually have to been through that process, would need to know what is the challenge when come replatforming? What will be the most crucial problem they would facing when doing it? So I believe that Kyle, you already have a lot of expertise when coming to this or experience when implementing this. How would you think the challenge that the merchant is supposed to be aware of when coming to this? Sure. Uh, I mean, the most obvious, uh, I think, challenge that, that any merchant looking at a replatform would face is time and money, right? The, these, um, it is not, while it, it certainly is not prohibitive um, to make a replatform, it is a very serious strategic decision that a that a business would make, right? It, it takes typically anywhere from three to six months um, or longer, depending on the size of the business. But for a mid mid-sized business, you could expect to take about six months to replatform your business. And that's everything from building the new site to migrating all your data, making sure everything's working proper properly, and then training your teams up to launch and 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 support the, the new platform. And so um, on top of that, obviously there's there's technical resources. Um, while there's a lot of these modern platforms do leverage an ability for a SaaS platform that make it quite simple to get a store up and running. A lot of the things that are unique to your business will be needed to be integrated into that platform, make sure they're working properly with different systems, whether it's your point of sale and your storefronts, whether it's your accounting software, tax software, uh, third party logistics, all of these things need to be supported and implemented into your new site. And so um, in addition to the time, it does cost some money, uh, you know, for uh, a, a replatform effort. And so these are things that merchants would want to take into account as they're preparing to make such a move. Um, the other, I think, large challenge that businesses run into a lot of times is around the business process, particularly if you've been on a platform for a long time, if you have a lot of your team is very familiar with certain ways of working with the old interfaces, uh, back office, control panels, and things of this nature for your uh, existing platform, understanding and training your, your your teams up on how to use this new platform can be challenging. And so um, there may be not only the familiarity with how to use the tools, but also some changes to the actual underlying business processes. When you drive efficiency, there's new ways of solutions connecting. And it's really important to make sure that your teams not only are aware of how to use it, but how to implement the functionality so that they can improve and find more efficiency um, offline as well as online. So that's actually a perfect sharing, Kyle. I think that is really, really detailed when coming to the challenge that the merchant might facing when coming to replatforming. And I believe time and money and business process does shows actually the two biggest details the merchants are thinking about when they have their thought on challenge when coming to replatforming. Um, but of course, I believe that it is just not something we're going to stop in when coming to challenge. The challenge for replatforming is going to be much huger, right? Because, well, it's replatforming. There's so many things to do. It's just not stop at the operational side. It's going to be have a bit of technical side too. 
And I think this part would be perfect for Jason to share when you're thinking about the re-platforming, what would be the challenge for the technical size of the merchant? Certainly. Uh, honestly, and, and a little biased because this is where I came from is uh, point of sale integration land, but um, having strong bi-directional integration is absolutely crucial um, to the success of any uh, project like this. And if it's not there, and if that's not part of the plan, then uh, you're, you're already sort of behind. And so finding a, a, a system that's already well integrated or when there's a good history uh, of those systems uh, talking to each other um, is really incalculable um, to allow you know something like a robust point of sale system to be uh, a single point of entry in truth. They, that way you're not doing double entry and you're getting the best possible data accuracy across your systems. So when you're looking then you know to to future proof whatever environment you're going into, you're looking for something with a modern ar architecture with with modern APIs and webhooks. Um, and it's surprising how many modern e-commerce platforms don't actually have those. And so you, you're, you're really going at a, a, a more difficult integration road when they're not there. But when they are, uh, the, when the efficiency and accuracy is, is going to be much higher uh, and you can spend more time and resources growing the business rather than simply maintaining it. And you want to have those problems solved very early in the discovery process and understand what that lift is going to be and that they're, you're not having to write it as a one off and that it's going to be maintained over time and it'll be there um, in one year, two years, three years, uh, and making sure that your systems uh, and your integration environment can stay modern and inexpensive and agile. And then I suppose one of the other serious considerations is the complexity of data migrations. Um, the upside there is if you have a very well integrated point of sale environment or ERP environment, a lot of your data, data migration headaches can go away because you can populate the site with data that's up to date real time from your point of sale, rather than having to do a more cumbersome full data migration from one site to another. So that's the space where your migration is uh, a, a little easier in a more modern environment. And uh, having the right agency and technology partners crucial to success here too. If you're working with a PIM, um, these can be much easier as well with modern headless uh, e-commerce models, You know, making these sometimes messy migrations much simpler um, when the e-commerce platform supports that. Oh, that is very detailed of your sharing. And to be honest, with my perspective, when working with, as a partner of big commerce, we are the point of sales and we do see that how the data migration, how the sales data, the old data being migrated is so important and crucial for the merchants. And it's actually something not all of the merchants can understand because it's very technical and it depends on the level of understanding for each person to actually understood and digest the information when coming to technical challenges. So I think this sharing would be a very valued and our attendees would be very beneficial at having this information. So thank you, Jason, for that sharing. It's really having a lot of peripheral insight for it. But of course, um, that is just for the challenging. And the more we come deeper into this, you will see how complex the re-platforms are coming. It's having to be the time, the effort, the beneficials of the merchants, and then coming to the technical. There are so many things that the merchant needs to be aware of. And I believe that they would need to have a guide from the expertise, the one who already did so many implementations or have experience with this to guide them from. So I think that actually will be coming to the part that we need to have some tips, having some actionable insight to help our merchant carry out the benefit. So Kyle, would you happy to sharing a bit of your expertise to how our merchants can kick off a re-platform? What should they do at first? Absolutely. So I think anytime you're looking at making a, a large business decision like this, uh, it's important to have a very clear idea of what your scope and goals are, um, the objectives that you're looking to accomplish. This will really help to narrow the focus for the replatform, help make sure that you have a clear understanding of what needs to be in existence for a, a solution that you're you're selecting at the end of your process right as you're evaluating multiple platforms as you're working with uh, third-party agencies or in-house tech teams um, you really want to make sure you have a very clear objectives of what you want to accomplish from a business perspective um, this will really help to narrow down 
the solutions that you're considering to help drive those conversations with those types of solutions and really help make sure that you have a clearly identified solution and plan for what you expect to get out of your replatform. And then I think it's really important as well to assess your current platform, right? Doing a, a thorough analysis of the issues, good, bad, what you love, what you don't like, uh, what you wish you were able to do is really important because many times you might find that something is possible on your current platform, but whether something is possible or ideal is a really uh, the challenge, right? And so understanding what you're looking to improve upon your current process will also help to weed out solutions that either uh, have the same challenges or don't really actually solve what you're looking to to improve upon from your current platform. Mm, true. I believe that that is sounds very, very true because to be honest, I already have experience working with multiple platform. So it's all about setting up the expectation. You need to understand your business, understand the platform and you need to, to evaluate the old solution with the new solution, set expectations. So it's true. The merchant should be the one who define what they expect, set up their own expectation when coming to new system, new platform, and then kicks off from there. So they will be needing to have a true understanding of their own merchant, their own business, their own operations, and config that into the new e-com. But of course, um, I believe we still have more insight regarding of that. So anything add on for that, Jason, or you find that already covered it? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, really, you're just trying to consider, you know, the scalability, flexibility, security, and ease of use of a, of a platform and ease of use, which is to say, you know, can you operate at a low code or a no code level and re versus requiring development with changes or upgrades? And, and where's the value of that? Do you want to host it a traditional system or a modern SaaS offering? How well will it fit into your existing tech stack? Because integration costs can add 50 to 75% on to the migration if that's not there and ready out of the box. Do you have a headless strategy? Are you wanting advanced features like BOPUS and Endless Island? What does it look like to implement those? What kind of complexity or, uh, or applications can be easily added uh, or exist inside of an integration to be able to give you those quickly? And, and then what are your needs over the next couple of years and how do you future proof it? And then, you know, you're looking at your migration strategy, planning that out um, for a smooth transition, you know, finding out what it looks like. For example, big commerce, you know, we have resources internally that can help assist with that. Um, but very often you're going to be working with an agency and or you're going to be using internal resources. And what do those look like? So just having um, a real clear plan and uh, it will help you make the right choice. Yeah, I think that is a really great um, address for the merchants. It sounds like everything you, Kyle and Jason, sharing, you guys must having a really good case study to determine all of that because that is not something coming from the textbook, right? Because it sounds really, really realistic and something like actually walk out from some clients already done a great migrations and great replatform like that. So I think this must be from some case study, right? Do you guys willing to share with me the name of that case study? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think we, we have a joint merchant uh, with Big Commerce and Connect POS. Uh, Yeti Cycles, one of the leaders in the mountain bike uh, manufacturing space uh, based out of Colorado uh, here in the United States. And, um, you know, really an, an exciting company that really has focused on its growth from a product innovation standpoint. They have a uh, racing team that they support and this is their their slogan is we build bikes we'd like to ride um, so really somebody that's in the weeds really looking at their product how can we innovate and improve um, for the high-end uh, demanding space of mountain bike racing um, and really wanted to, to expand upon that um, one of the things that that product innovation had actually begun to drive was a, a growth of traffic and, and interest in their their products uh, especially in the pandemic over the last couple of years, there was a lot more focus on how do I get outdoors? How do I get in touch with, you know, nature and, and start to enjoy what I can do outside. And, and so yeah. they started getting a ton of traffic to their website. Uh, the challenge was is their e-com platform was holding them back. They were previously using a combo of Shopify, Magento and ReadyMag to cobble together a solution that over time had grown, uh, past it, it, its best use, right? And so it was starting to no longer be an advantage for them, but actually uh, a disadvantage. 
And so as they were looking at a replatform, they were they were understanding a few challenges that they were looking to improve upon. One was product page limitations and the other was cross selling limitations. Right. And so launching any new product as they would innovate was really a challenge because the marketing team was spending most of their time actually uploading new product to the site rather than really focusing on how to uh, expand their their base, uh, promote their products and, and figure out how to attract new merchants. Mm. But they and actually so, got this part a lot, right? What was that? So they have to duplicate a lot of their effort when coming to product and then operation back office. They don't have the resources to continue to conducting the sale, right? Yeah, it, it, it's, it was a, a combination of double work, but also just having to make hard decisions of we can't really focus on what grows the business because we're spending so much time just trying to get our new products launched on the site, right? Especially when you look at a, a combination of platforms like a Shopify, Magento, ReadyMag, uh, Mage POS for their, um, or Mage Store for their POS solution. Uh, there was really just a lot of different solutions that needed to be manually updated to make sure everything reflected correctly. And so this takes time, of course, uh, away from the team to uh, focus on on uploading things rather than actually just getting them on the store and then figuring out how do we get more people to our store. Um, and so this complicated tech stack also meant that any change required working with their uh, dev teams in order to manually update the web and backend systems. And so it was really cumbersome, right? The, the business teams that were focused on growth were having to spend most of their time just maintaining the site, making improvements to the site rather than what they really were trying to focus on to excel. Um, and additionally, it was costly, right? Because in addition to the dev teams, this was time that the, the business marketing teams and things of this nature were spending double working to your point on, on how to get these things on their website. And so that inability to directly control site updates was really hampering their ability to grow. One of the other things that they were experiencing challenges with was their existing POS mage store is a Magento solution, right? And so as they were exploring a move away from Magento, they were also recognizing part of that really uh, deep analysis of their current platform and the current capabilities was recognizing that their, uh, what other solutions weren't going to be supported on a new platform. And so one of the things they were also looking to do simultaneously was understand how do we connect our store to our website and really provide that omni-channel experience that allows us to help merchant our, our customers, whether they're coming into our store or whether they're purchasing online. And so this was something that they were spending a lot of time trying to understand what's the right solution for us as we, now that we know we, we need to make a change, where do we go and how do we make the right decisions for the tech stack that we're looking for? Thank you, Kyle, for sharing about who is Jetty Cycle and what are they actually facing? I think you have really deep knowledge on that clients. Uh, of course, we, they are US based and you already work with them for implementations. They're a really good case study. But of course, um, it, that is just a brief information about them. I think our attendee will be very keen on to know more detail on the solutions and what is the achievement after implementing that solution. So I think this question would be the most perfect for Jason, right? Who have so many experience on implementing this. So Jason, can you give our attendee a bit of the hint for the solution and achievement of Jetty Cycle when they do the replatforming? Sure. They, you know, one of the reasons that big commerce was chosen in this situation was they needed a headless solution and not every platform out there is going to be able to land in that type of environment. They um, have had a robust ERP. Uh, they're using a CRM. Uh, they were using a bus. They're using a PIM. And so they needed a solution that could easily fit into that environment. And big commerce uh, was really perfect for them. They basically, they said, you know, moving away from this operating on multiple backend systems that didn't talk to each other well, um, led to a less than ideal consumer experience and being on just one platform made that a more seamless experience for the consumer. That was huge for them. And so once, you know, big commerce was able to you know, support those other systems and move forward, um, you know, they were able to uh, increase within the first six months of the implementation, 53% uh, increase in users, 36% um, uh, increase in page views. Um, and today, the big commerce um, and, and Xenary collaboration, Yeti's marketing team can build new pages within minutes of what Kyle was talking about, streamlining that product upload, 
um, automating the launch of the product releases and, and scheduling them in advance before go live. This is, this allows them to really change the brand experience by allowing the marketing team access uh, to data and to be able to move and have the e-commerce team adapt that quickly. It, they couldn't do that before by uh, adding these features and, and creating this sort of seamless environment throughout all their tech. Uh, they're now able to give the type of brand experience they've always wanted. And, you know, BigCommerce, which is perfectly designed for that with the, the way the APIs are built, the headless model, um, it, it, it was the ideal, uh, you know, situation for them. But really, you know, the, the Connect POS add-on was a huge change for them too. And Carol, I think that you're probably the most informed on that. Could you share that with us? Yes, I think for Connect POS, I, we actually are the one who beneficial from everything you have implemented for JT Cycle. So you guys already give them a great marketing effort, everything uh, popped it with the solution. So Connect POS actually jump in at the point of sale solution that connected directly and have real time sync with big commerce and reflect everything from big commerce to the point of sale. So the merchants going to be the one who have all of the data aligned it between all the system. They don't have to duplicate the effort anymore. They just conducting sale, transaction, omni-channel journey for the client in store. And then of course, no more extra effort. So they don't have to do anything manually. And the new system infrastructures gonna be more smoother, more easier to use. The staff are more convenient to conducting sale and training. So I think for Connect POS, we actually have the full result for all of the re-platform um, process before. And of course, we are the ones who witnessed it, all the numbers and the convenience in operation of the clients. So I think for Connect POS, I believe that big commerce did a really great job on re-platform and any system in the habitat of the clients have a lot of beneficial from it. And that is just not something that's set as a part only. So when the client provide a full flow army channels like that with a streamlined system, they actually set it out more with their competitor, especially during the pandemic, where they requested to have uh, more contactless um, sales, more operational optimized to um, of course to scale up their revenue and also to lower the cost of operation. So I think this case study really represent for a fully transformed uh, replatforming that affects a lot to their business performance. And that is a really good case study for us. And of course, as you can see, we having a good case study. We already have the number to talk all the way through for us. So everything we're sharing today is just not coming from any textbook. It's come from reality for really figures, really case study, and really merchants with business case. So I think after this postcard, I believe there is a lot of merchants going to have the same question. How would they implement this to their business? How would they gather all of the re-platforming effort like this into their situation right now? So I think, I believe that big commerce will have some offer for our attendee if they have the same question like that, right, is it Kyle? Yeah, so um, we definitely love to continue the conversation that we've been having here around your business specifically, whether that's for a replatform or just questions about what the right decision would be. Uh, we understand that it's a, a large decision that any business makes to replatform, and we're definitely well positioned to be able to help support not only in discussions around the e commerce platform, but you also get access to our tech stack consultants, whether those are payments, omni channel, marketing technology, shipping, and tax. The goal here is for us to bring clarity and guidance for the best way to leverage our platform on big commerce for your business's growth. In most cases, we're able to deliver not only material top line cost savings for the, how you run your business, but also give you the foundation between big commerce and our partner solutions like Connect POS for how to help scale your business for the future. Yeah, that is true. So, of course, you guys go help going to guideline our merchants if they want to join hand into this process and join into this trend. They will have a full consultant, a full help 
from the commerce to onboarding and of course for connect pos side as a solutions that beneficial from this process we are also going to offer to all merchants the attendees that want to join into the system we will offer you guys a commentary three-month license to getting on board to getting to know with big commerce doing the implementation the transformations without have any extra cost for the point of sale until you're ready with the system so of course i hope all of that benefit will be something fruitful for our attendees. So please register with us after this podcast with the links below so we can give you guys more advice and reach out directly to you guys. So very thank you for having this session with us. And I believe all the sharing of Connect POS and Big Commerce team going to be beneficial for everyone. Did you guys have any word you want to talk to attendee before we end this podcast? I just want to say thank you, Carol, for the opportunity to join today. It's really a pleasure partnering with Connect POS, and um, we we certainly appreciate the opportunity to join here today. Yeah, very much, and we I very much like working with Point of Sale partners that have excellent integrations, and you do. Thank you for that. Perfectly. So we're very happy for have the partnership with BigCommerce, and very thank you too for the sharing. So let's keep in touch for more episodes of the podcast sharing from Connect POS. And we hopefully will have a great future for all the merchants that are working with us. We are very appreciate you guys for being with us today. So very thank you and have a nice day. Thanks so much. Thanks so much.